Hello, and welcome to another episode of Philosophical Bones. I'm Nick. I'm Keith. Yep, my uh, guest again. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just I'm I'm just an easy guest. So. You are. <laughs> we have a lot of good debates on the yeah. shit, man. Well, and our our last couple of Philly Bones have been like really good. Oh yeah, yeah dude, they've I'm been really good. Them. And really I want to thank I want to thank everybody out there for uh, for listening. You know, uh, hopefully you're enjoying it as much as we are. Yeah, uh, we get a lot of. I mean, I just. We're getting a lot of good downloads on what we're yeah, doing. You know, we're getting a lot of good feedback. And honestly, too. to us, like we don't get a lot of downloads, but at the same time, when we have like twenty or thirty downloads, we get we're excited. Like, we're excited. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that just means people are listening, and like yeah. we do this for us. Yeah, you know, what I mean, it's it's. I don't really, you know, because I'm a super introverted person. Yeah, but when I'm behind these mics, it's a com- completely different thing. Oh, totally, uh, man. Yeah, I'm like, oh, party time. I don't give a fuck. But, but anyway, yeah. to get back to uh, what we're doing, so uh, today we're doing uh, question fourteen. Is money the root of all evil? See, I honestly believe that it, like uh, my grandpa used to always say, uh, money is the great corruptor. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, well, that, that's another way to form this question, actually. Yeah, like, because uh, you can um, think about it before before human beings actually had, like, physical pieces of paper that were currency. Yeah. We all did, like, trade and whatever. But oh, it was more of a bartering system. Yeah, yeah, yeah ex- barter is a better way to put it. But, but you, you still did have a kind of, pe- some people had more than others. Well, and that's kind of what I'm getting to my point here okay. is, like, Okay, Continue. so so if somebody has something more of something, some somebody has more of something than somebody else. They're gonna quote unquote covet that and yeah. and want it. That's the exact word uh, I would have used. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. they're they're going to uh, go out of the way to maybe do something um, questionable. Yeah, that's probably why it's a commandment. Honestly, exactly. That Thou shalt, shalt not covet. Yeah, exactly. So like you think about it's like uh, I go out of my way to not talk about um, like uh, political stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, you think about countries that don't have as much money as us or vice versa, Mm -hmm. you know, like we like kind of like down in our core, we kind of feel like we're better than them. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. You see what I'm saying? You know, like think about like, I mean, I'm just going to think of a random country like uh, uh, Ghana, Mm -hmm. you know, like they're they're not a third world country, but their economy is not the same as ours. But we almost wouldn't. Would, is it right to say that we're we're like kind of like one of the top like top? Uh, uh, well, it, we are actually the richest company or the richest country in the history of the world. Yeah, yeah, and that tends, that's what they say anyway. Well, and that that tends to make people arrogant. You know what I'm saying? But like, actually, they, they will say too. Um, uh, for one, statin is. Um, I believe I'm, oh, I'm going to get this right. Is that <laughs> the top six wealthiest people in the in the U.S. have more income than the bottom like? Like ninety percent. That's or insane. something like something like that. That's or insane. Bottom sixty percent. I think it might be sixty percent. I'm not one hundred percent sure. Yeah. Well, uh, but still, that's a crazy stat. Well, like on my vein of it being like the ultimate corruptor, you look at like people that uh, have never really, really had to struggle for anything, mm. and then you like look at somebody like you, myself or yourself, yeah, that work on a daily basis. These like we'll call them the one percenters mm-hmm. don't have like and I'm not calling them evil yeah but they they don't have an idea of like what the world really takes to well like, it's get that, by. it's a whole question about how uh you know like it, like with politicians for instance yeah. it's like they want to make policy and everything but it's like can you tell me how much a gallon of milk costs that's the oh, that's always the right, question right right and and usually they're like what is it like you know ten dollars it's like or two dollars it's like well that just tells me you haven't been in a grocery store in fucking years yeah or you haven't shopped for yourself yeah <laughs> you know that that's kind of a crazy thing that just tell that well that that whole thing is just telling me that pe- that they're out of touch well, yeah yeah that they, they don't have a, like an idea of like what a dollar is even really worth yeah and i mean but uh, you know there i'm i'm not saying like all people are, are all billionaires you know they got their money from somewhere else there are a few, yeah. but they, you do see those self-made like billionaires yeah. out there like who Elon, did who Elon did Musk. who did start from the bottom and, and like with nothing and lived in and lived in poverty when they were yeah. younger, yeah. And then get but then get to those heights of being a billionaire. And but I feel like at those point, people are like oh you know those some of those guys are like uh you look at uh Howard Schultz for instance the CEO of Starbucks he recently was like thinking about launching a campaign for president. What? And people like oh people completely rail against this guy this guy. It's like stop thinking like like some guy yelled out one of his like uh kind of like talks or whatever. It's like it was it was pretty much I'm paraphrasing. It's like stop like thinking like you know what's better what's best for us. You egotistical asshole. Yeah, exactly. I know yeah, I know the guy said egotistical ass or egotistical asshole, but it was like kind of like this guy is just kind of he's like yeah he grew up in poverty, but I feel like he's just kind of like out of touch. Well, like, like and they and it, but you, you get those things you get the questions now of actually people asking if uh if people who are rich think that they uh no solution they know uh how to better solve a problem than right. than someone who doesn't have that it's the whole it's the whole wealth gap thing where yeah. people think because they're they're uh, in a higher status and you could actually look back and, and you know throughout history when people have a higher status in um in a society they feel like 
they are they know better Mm -hmm. than somebody who is on a lower status well on that same vein from what you were just saying is like uh money kind of gives you an ego which you you know like uh, i thought while you were saying that i had like this thing pop into my head is like wow i'm guilty of this Mm -hmm. like okay your everyday american walks past a homeless person and it's like, and you have it, in, oh. you have it, in, you have it in your mind. Like, go get a job. Yeah. You're like, you don't even think mm-hmm. about, you don't even think about like what their individual struggles might be. Yeah. Like, maybe they have an alcohol problem. Mm-hmm. Maybe they have a drug problem. How, how far be it from us to judge? Like, we we're not in their shoes. Yeah. You well, know? actually, um, um, I want to bring up Megan, um, who's been on a few episodes. If you have, yeah. if you, if she's going to be, she's going to be on, a, she's going to be on my a, next episode. And well, then she's going to be on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. Um. But Shout she, out. <laughs> but she, uh, she works with uh with kids who are homeless. Oh, really? Like teenagers. I didn't yeah. Know that. Uh, she works for an organization called Stand Up for Kids, mm-hmm. and she'll always tell me about how she'll meet these, you know, these kind of homeless street kids, and they're like the cool, like the nicest people yeah, too. Who, who knows what their circumstances are? Yeah, and it's not like they're not trying. It's just they just. It's it's honestly when it comes when it comes down to a lot of stuff is it's opportunity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, and you do look at that person who's homeless, like oh, you know, get a job. It's easy. It's like. There are factors you have to get past, you know, just having a place to live is, is well, you one have big to, you thing. Have, and most, and or like, just, just be able to get like, you know, a, a, like something to, to, to wear to a job interview, be able to exactly. take a shower. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, a lot of places won't hire you unless you have an actual physical address or a phone number even or a phone number. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of what I'm getting at is like, um, like I, I'm kind of like bringing it down to like the street level. Yeah. Like, um, like just your everyday American, you know, Here's the thing is like most Americans don't have most Americans don't uh, like have an extra 500 bucks in the bank. No, just 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 well, I think it's like 60 percent of, of the uh, Americans can't survive a four hundred dollar emergency. Exactly. Exactly. It would just wipe them out. Well, like uh, in my case in particular, I just had to have my wisdom tooth pulled mm-hmm. and that was 700 bucks. Yeah. And luckily they put me on because I don't have insurance and you know, I'll kind of get into that with like the insurance thing. Mm hmm. But like, uh, luckily, I got to be put on a uh, on a payment plan. Mm-hmm. But I tried to because this this dentist has take taken care of me for a long time, and I want to stay in good standing. So I gave them like basically all the money I had. Yeah, and you know, so like I have like nothing right now. Yeah, just because I had one. Well, rent. it's kind of funny too because uh, there's a there's a famous quote from I think like Trump actually, and, and or from from some it might it might have been him it might have been like somebody who was rich, but he's like, hey, you see that homeless guy out there? He's worth a billion dollars more than I am. Because it will, the whole thing is, is like he was, you know, just debt wise. Because a lot of people who are, oh. who are who actually do have a money or are considered rich, um, they t- a lot of them do have debt. Yeah, yeah. and they can have massive debt for like just business ventures. Mm. But it's like, yeah, you look at that guy; it's like he's worth a billion dollars more than I am. That, that's interesting. But still, at the same time, they still will look down on that guy. That's, at least in my opinion. Well, that's kind of what I don't. I, was I don't have at. the mindset of someone who's who, who's uh, has well. Money. That's why I try to make the analogy of like just your everyday American mm. w- walking past a homeless person, and you, like. Well, it's funny because that homeless person is probably actually richer than me too, because I do have debt. You've got debt. Yeah. So in a way, they are actually richer than uh, we yeah. are. Well, like what I was getting at is like the snap judgment of like uh, one thing that I do. And I'm so guilty of this. Mm-hmm. When I walk person that I when I walk past somebody that I know is gonna try to ask me for money, and I make that assumption right off the bat, mm-hmm. like walking past them, oh, this guy's gonna ask me for money. Yeah. No, I do the same thing. What I do is I fucking go out of my way to like not even acknowledge that they're standing there, and that's not. not that's. I'll not, usually say something if they ask me for change. I'll be like, no, I don't. Um, well, like what I'm saying is I try to I try to not make eye contact. Yeah. You know that. that I think, well, that, a lot of people do that. That that way I don't like um, initiate conversation. And then the thing that makes me a bad person because like I've heard I've talked to a lot of I've had friends that were homeless here and there. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, is like when you're homeless, you feel like you're invisible. Yeah. Be, be, because because people won't even look at you mm-hmm. because people won't like because they automatically assume that you're going to they're going to ask you for something. Yeah. So you do you do your best to not even acknowledge that they're there. Mm. So that that's kind of what I'm getting at is the like money being the the core of like all evil is. It kind of makes you, kind of gives you like the superiority complex. Yeah, and we're and and yeah, actually, that's a good way to, to put it because we're, like we're, we start out talking about like rich people, and when you think of is money the root of all you, you think of someone who has a lot of money, who's a millionaire, or a billionaire. But when it comes down to it, like you know, we're we're rich compared to someone who's homeless. Exactly. And so, in a way, like we are kind of a. Uh, it is kind of uh, a corrupting influence on us. In exactly. A way. Exactly. I, I didn't even, dude. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I would never have would have thought of that. Honestly. Yeah. Well, that's like when you when we were kind of coming up with ideas for questions for tonight. When mm-hmm. you when you like mentioned that, I was like, oh, dude. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, mentioned yeah, like yeah. four questions, and this is the last one. He's like, no, that one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
because he, like uh, I have a I have a story that's kind of not not really pertinent, but like uh, I was uh, it was maybe about twenty years ago, and I was first living on my own, mm-hmm. and uh, my uncle my uncle is worth over three million dollars. Wow. Yeah, and like uh, he was in town visiting, mm-hmm. and again I was having a tooth problem. Like yeah. I've had chronic teeth problems. But like I was just kind of like pouring my heart out to him to like please all, like all I need is like five hundred bucks and I yeah. can get this taken care of, and he didn't even bat an eye and he was like nah, I can't help you yeah and and for him five hundred dollars wouldn't even be a fart in the wind true you know what I mean but like so that it all depends on the personality of the person yeah um, yeah but like I, that if either rich or what we would consider rich or what we can would consider yeah. like you know well, you our to, status well you have to really think about like what like um like uh, five dollars to your eye is. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just, it's just pocket change. Yeah. But to somebody, to somebody that's out on the street that would hasn't eaten in three days because they don't have more than 50 cents, mm. you can, kind of got to think about that. So, like, it's, it's like, very relative. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and it really does, like, every, I'm going to use the word tier, like, every tier of, like, say, uh, say on an average basis you have $500. Mm. Say on an average basis you have $1,000 and so on and so forth. You're going to kind of be disconnected to what those struggles are. Yeah. On those. On those. That uh, is a good point. Like money does disconnect you. Yeah. A lot. Right, yeah. Um, one actually point I want to bring up is uh, in kind of defending people who are who have money, is Bill Gates. Oh yeah, dude, is he's, he's a great badass. because you actually do see later in life that uh, people who uh, have money are tend to be. Uh, not all of them, but there, there's a certain amount. You know, I actually would try to equate the same amount of people who are rich to people who are, mm-hmm. you know, maybe in like a medium income middle class. Um, and they, they become philanthropists. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at, uh, oh God, I'm trying to remember the na- his name. He, he owned like Standard Oil. Like, oh, I'm not, I know you're talking about, but I can't, I can't um, listen to him. But if, later in life, he, uh, uh, I think it was Rockefeller. That's what I'm thinking of. Is, it Luke, is it Luke Rockefeller? No. Uh, I forgot. It's just Rockefeller. Yeah. Guy, Rockefeller. <laughs> when you say Rockefeller, you think of like this yeah. guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And he uh, later in life, actually, he uh, he made all his money. He he actually, if they c- accounted for inflation, he was like the most the richest person who had ever lived. I think. Oh, okay. At least okay. by modern standards, you know, you yeah. could probably go back to like pharaohs and shit like that, or like, well, right, you know, Roman right. times. But anyway, like uh, later in his life, he uh, became a philanthropist and started giving his money away. Mm, you okay. know, because you have those people who are like, I don't want these my fucking kids to just like leech, you know, be leeches right. later on, which we'll get back. We should get back to that. But yeah, you see someone like Bill Gates, and he gives away a billion dollars a year to his foundation. That's amazing. That's and he's amazing. actually tried to make a lot of change in the world. Yeah, he's like, I'm not just going to sit on this fortune. And I think even I think even his kids, he has set up like where they don't get a lot of money. Yeah, because well, you can't take it with you. Yeah, oh, but like, but he's he's definitely like he's used his money for good. You know, well, he's not. He, he's, I I wouldn't say Bill Gates is really evil in any way. No, no. See, like you said, it's I don't know everything about the guy. He could be in well, some ways, you, but but he's. He, He's, you you used the phrase earlier as relative, mm-hmm. you know, and like uh, you made me think of something. Um, jo- have you ever heard of Jocko Wilson? I think so. He's jo- a Marine, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, or uh, Navy SEAL or something. He, like uh, he's uh, in uh, he's uh, has a kind of a charity with um, I forget the guy's name, but he's an MMA fighter. Yeah, and his uh, nickname is the Big Pygmy hmm. because he's actually in the, right now. His whole thing is he goes to the Congo and raises money. To create wells mm. for people in the Congo. No, I've heard of that before, like an ad before the, yeah, uh, the it's Joe a, Rogan it's, experience. It's, a, it's a, the Forgotten or something. Fight, yeah. for, fight for the Forgotten. Fight for the Forgotten, yeah. And, you know, and like, shout out to them. Yeah, shout out, man. So like, uh, the, getting back to our, our main topic of like money being evil, like a lot of people that like don't, a lot of people wouldn't even have that um, be on their radar. Mm-hmm. You know, and like this guy is an MMA fighter or a former MMA fighter. And he's a, I forget what you would call it when, not a, mer, not a missionary, but a, he just goes over, he's a humanitarian. Okay. So like he goes over there and just helps because he's got the money, mm-hmm. and, you know, and like uh, there's a, like shot again, shout out to Fight for the Forgotten. Definitely yeah. check that stuff out. You, you can like, I've actually donated to it. It's, it's really cool. I think that was, I think so far they've created a hundred wells. That's, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, like, so people, people that have money. And he's not even someone who has money. No. <laughs> but, he, but he's got, he's got a, pla- well, actually, that's one thing I want to get to is. He's got a platform. He has a platform. And that's one thing. If you do have money, you instantly have a platform. Yeah. And you recognize is like, oh, this guy's a millionaire. This guy owned this company or managed this mm-hmm. company. He has, and like, like I said, Bill Gates, he has a platform yeah. to which he can, he can kind of spout a message and really, and reach a lot of people. Right. You know, and uh, you kind of made somebody come to my mind that I need to fucking call out. I like, think about Dan Bilzerian. 
Do you know who Dan Bilzerian I've, is? I think I've heard the name before. He's a grade A douchebag. Like he, he, and I don't care if people hear this and fucking want to talk shit. Mm-hmm. This guy made it. He's he's worth millions of dollars over playing poker, and like he's got this Instagram account. That's, that's probably how I've heard of him. Then he's he's got this Instagram account where he's like, he like there's one image where he's firing a fucking minigun that he owns and stuff mm. like that. Like, dude, okay, so that is the epitome of being selfish. Yeah. He doesn't work. Well, in every aspect like, dude, of life, th- you are going to find those people who are selfish. Like, th- throw a quarter of that money, mm-hmm. a quarter, even a fifth of that money that that guy has to helping people. Well, do we know that if we were all of a sudden to have money that we would... I would like to I would like to we'd think. like to think. I would like to think I would. Yeah. But, I, you know, I've struggled for 30, almost 37 years. Well, when I see, like, years. stuff for charities, like, I just... I honestly, or I don't have any money well, to, the, the only, to like spare for something. The, like, like the only charity that I've d- donated to is Fight for the Forgotten. Yeah. And I've only given $30. I can't toot my own yeah. horn. I can't toot my own horn. Mm-hmm. But like $30 is for me, you know, like we were talking about relativity. $30 for me is really not a lot of money. Yeah. You know, but it could help make a difference. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like it's all about relativity. You know, like you think about, um, like I'll, I'll go back to Bill, uh, Bill Zer- Dan Bilzerian. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember he was on Rogan, and he was talking about he lost $2 million on one hand of poker. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, dude, a, a fifth of that money could have changed somebody's life. You oh, know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Could it, what's, what's the fifth of $1 million? I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, think about, think about somebody that's, like, just out it's of like prison. like 200 grand. Yeah, like, think about somebody that's, that's just out of prison, trying to get their life back together, and they can't make $5 to fucking just try to go on the right, the straight, mm-hmm. the straight and narrow. And then they revert back to whatever they were well, doing. Well, one question I think I'll, I'm going to just say, but I might, I think I'm going to do I don't, this next, I don't mean I'm going to do this next week actually is uh, why are people who uh, kind of have nothing or people who are considered poor uh, so willing to give the most? Right. Well, it's because they've been there. Yeah. It's, it's because well, I don't want to get into that question. Oh, okay. Now. Oh, sorry. I kind of want to get, I want to get into that with Megan actually. I think she'd be a good person talking yeah. about that. But you, but you know, like, um, again, this is why I like being on this show mm-hmm. because it's like, a good debate. Well, I, well, you know, I'm, I'm kind of the, the king of rambling. Mm-hmm. Oh, and uh, I, I don't know. Did Megan tell you? Like we were kind of just randomly texting back and forth. Did you tell? Did, did she tell you our nicknames? No. You're the business. Oh yeah, that's right. Josh is still waters, <laughs> and I'm I'm the mouth. Nice. I like that. <laughs> so, I like that, dude. So like that's that's our that's our nicknames. But so, uh, so probably one of the last things I want to get into is uh, so like I, I said, I was going to get back to this is about people who inherit wealth. Right, the children Heirs, of, of the wealthy, heiresses or heirs and heiresses, heirs and heiresses. Well, you look at like uh, the one because they are brought. A lot of them were are brought up in wealth, and they're never really true. They never really know the value of a dollar. Like they look at like a hundred dollars, and they'll like just wipe their ass. But if uh, you, but if that same hundred dollars to like me or you is like that could really help me out. They could pay my bills. They could pay a bill for for a month. I could pay my phone bill. Could yeah, pay, could pay like. Because uh, you know, I won't really. But they would light that thing on fire to light a cigar. They yeah. just don't. It's like it's nothing to them. Well, like one thing that I'm I... not saying this is all. But yeah, it, we're generalizing. Yeah, we're generalizing. Because I like like I keep saying is, is there's in, in the same amount in rich people or the same percentage of rich people who are shitty, you find the exact same percentage in people who are poor. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, like uh, and uh, before you know, like, not to you know, like get too personal, but like I, you know, the the buddy that uh, I share my domicile with. Mm-hmm. Is out of work and it's kind of rough. Yeah, you know, like there, there's people that wouldn't even b- bat an eye. Yeah. So what I'm gonna, I'm just kind of trying to like bring the question to a full circle. Like there, like if uh, if money really does affect the way the human psyche works, it's it's um, what am I trying to say? Like if money really does affect the way the human psyche works, it's kind of a shame mm-hmm. because it's all materialism. It's true. So I'm just gonna finish it with saying that like with my grandpa's. My grandpa's phrase is money is a great corruptor because you mm-hmm. you lose touch with everybody else. That's true. Like if, if you have abundance, you lose touch with people that you have, kind of shelter yourself. Yeah. Like if, if, you, if you have abundance, you lose touch with people that struggle. Mm. So yeah. that's a good point. Uh, yeah. So that that's basically what that's like the long and the short of what I have to say about it. And you think you that know? definitely and you think that applies to like the children? That's well, why. Well, because well, 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 it, even, it even applies to animals, dude. Yeah. Oh. Think about that. You know, like there, there's like uh, animals that like. Uh, uh, let me try to phrase this perfectly. There's animals that uh, hoard what they have to survive, mm. and there's other animals that struggle. You know, like, uh, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, it's it, it's it, kind it, of a, it's kind of just built into every creature it, it, in a way. It, it, it's built into every living thing to 
hoard as much as you can get. Mm. And then once you have that, you don't give a shit about any other living thing. Yeah. You know, like you just like, I, this is just what I need to get by. Mm-hmm. Cause I don't, I don't care if that person over there doesn't get to have dinner tonight. You know, like I, I'm going to, I'm going to have a, big... but you find family structures throughout nature too. Yes, you absolutely do. You absolutely do. Like in particular with the uh, dolphins. Yeah. Like dol- dolphins. Actually, I, I saw a thing on TV the other day where, um, they, it was, um, it was a it was a documentary on uh, communication, and uh, like there there was this dolphin family they call them pods. Yeah, and like there was this one pod to where there was several adults that had several um, uh, offspring. Mm-hmm. One of the f- adults died, and they actually the other dolphins took on the offspring. Mm-hmm. And you don't see that much in does that in, happen with penguins? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't you don't see that much in nature, but like it's really kind of away from the general the the question that we started off from. But, no way, but I think it's still actually kind of relates. Yeah, like what it is is uh, in, at the core of everything is it's uh, giving of yourself. I think yeah. you know, like that's uh, you can't you can't let your uh, self worth kind of get in the way of helping other people. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. This has been a really interesting uh, yeah. discussion. Well, I gotta it, say, it seems like we do that every time. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, one thing with 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 these is I feel like we kind of get to a root of of uh, the question. Of course, yeah, exactly. Try to find an answer. Sometimes we don't have an answer. Sometimes we do. Yep. yep. You know, and I think it, it's always just kind of we we try to see two sides of the same you know the coin. S- two sides of the same coin. Yeah. 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 And because, I think, well, because uh, I've been on, I have to say, you know, to cut you off, I'm sorry, yeah. but I've been on both sides. Yeah. Like I've been, I've had no money to where my friends had to buy me food. Yeah. And I've had so much money that I just could I could go just out, blow it I could go out and spend five hundred dollars yeah. not even fucking think no, about I it. think I've been in this, I've been in the same situation <laughs> but you know like right now I'm kind of leveling out I'm like yeah, right in the, I'm like kind of like right in the in between which is why I start going back to school <laughs> yeah so I'm like I, I, I can't deal with being poor like this <laughs> well it, it just sucks when you can't when you have to like um when you're hungry and then you gotta be like okay is it really worth it to go out and spend five bucks yeah you know, think about that yeah because there's a lot of people about there in that situation like should I save this money so I can eat tomorrow mm-hmm. or should I go ahead and spend $5 and go buy some ramen and some soup and yeah. some, some potatoes? Definitely. And, you know, like, cause I, I've been in that situation so many times where I've mulled over spending 10 bucks, mulled over spending 10 bucks mm-hmm. for like an hour. Like, Oh, is, oh, yeah, is, me is, too. is this worth it? Is it worth <coughs> it? Should I, should... I'm not like, Oh, do I really want to go see the uh, concert? And then it's like, well, if I go to this concert, I'm going to spend like, you know, this right. much money and this much money in alcohol. It's like, is it worth it for me to do that? Or yeah, should I like yeah. save that and, Use it to eat. Exactly. You know, like, oh, am I going to be able to pay my electric bill if I go spend, if I, if I go over $5, am I going to be able to pay my electric bill? Right. You know, like, that's kind of thing that, it kind of sucks. You know what I mean? Like, um, you think about, like, um, Star Trek. Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. Hold on, there's a plane going over. You guys, you guys can hear that. <laughs> so, like, you think about, <laughs> you, 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 you think about Star Trek, they did away with the monetary system whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Like there's no, there's like even the Orville even talks about that. Yeah, like they did away with the monetary system altogether because the way that they phrase it in the Orville is it's not our natural state. No, oh. you know, to I, I'd actually, I, I'd, I'd say it kind of is. Well, that's just well, way, it's become that way. That's just the way they phrase it in the yeah. Orville. But you know, it's the thing is, is like uh, we should be. How do they phrase it in this in in the Orville? It's like we should be uh, defined by our actions, not by how many pieces of paper we have. Yeah, you know, I like, love that. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, true. So we should, you know, like things. I we're, think, but we're, we're. I think, I think one thing as a society is, is uh, we, we kind of op- operate on incremental change. Mm-hmm, yeah, and that's just kind of the way. Like I think eventually we'll go. Is we'll, we'll get, we will get to that system, that kind of Star Trek, like kind of utopian mm-hmm. society at some point down the line every, every, everybody's equal it's just it's gonna take some time well you think because we, we just don't we don't do well with major change no yeah we fight against it yeah especially not on that scale no you know like because that would have to be it would have and to, people will probably look back on this time in history and be like what the fuck were those people doing yeah, like trading pieces of paper and yeah. a, a, agreeing to collecting a, uh you know uh what, what is it uh material wealth yeah exactly you know, material possessions like how how amazing would it be if we were just all had the equal opportunity to have you know like we could get a lot done no, like not not like in excess mm-hmm. but like uh just like everybody if everyone was just giving the re- giving the resources to kind of to, ha- to have a to home, make things better to have a home mm-hmm. pay their bills and feed their family and mm-hmm. have a little bit to just kind of like be okay yeah you know like that's that they, they would take a genius to make that happen, mm. but like you know, there's no reason to not work towards that. 
You know, no, the, I think we kind of are in a way. Yeah, yeah. It's just to, so everybody, like, it's just gonna take a long time well, to get like, there. I think my big thing with this whole conversation, like I've gone back to it more than once, is mm-hmm. ho- is homelessness. Yeah, but, like that shit breaks my heart. Mm. You know, like, and not to get all heavy, but that shit breaks my heart because there's a lot of people that are homeless because they have mental mental disabilities, mm. have drug problems, have you know just you know, criminal problems. Mm-hmm. You know, and the, I just really wish there was a way that the American people could address that. You yeah, know, like try, so I, I'm sorry. I know it's like so off topic. No, no, you make a good point. <laughs> but you know, like it, I, I really think that we have it in us to do it. Yeah. You know, like I said, it, all that money is is a piece of paper that we decided that, that it's worth this much. Yeah. That's and, and unfortunately, it kind of corrupts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. At the same time, it can help. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of yeah, we're we're kind of on both sides of this about yeah. like you know. Is is money the root of all evil? Yeah, well, we've gone back and forth a couple times. Yeah, yeah. I mean, g- can you even give an answer at this point? I well, I'm gonna just uh, just gonna Maybe yes or no. Well, I'm just gonna quote my grandpa. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's the great corrupter. Okay. Because it could it could you could you could with if you had a fortune you could do something awesome with it. Mm-hmm. But again, it's like that little fucking devil that's on your shoulder that's in your. At the same ear. time, I could buy this. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, do something I, selfish for myself. So I don't think it's fair to say it's the root of all evil. For some, maybe for but some, I, that's why I like no. the, that's why I like the phrase "it's the great corrupter." Yeah, because it's like you can you can have the greatest intentions, you could yeah. have all this money and have the greatest intentions ever, mm-hmm. and then that little fucking voice comes in your head and be like, "Oh, I can yeah. do I can do this, I can do that." You yeah. Know? So it's kind of hard to say. Yeah. So I think I think we kind of we covered a lot. <laughs> we did, man. We did. So uh, this has been uh, Philosophical Bones. Question Thank, fourteen. Is thanks money... for thanks for having me again, man. Oh, of course, dude. I love having you on. Yeah. And yeah, the qu- uh, question fourteen uh, is money the root of all evil? And Try, yeah. chime in on the comments. Yeah, definitely. Give give us your opinion. Yeah. You know, we'd love to hear it. And as always, uh, if you uh, want to pose, pose a, us a philosophical question or you want to even come on, yeah. you know, send us an email at nerdybonescast gmail uh, Hit us up on Instagram or I, Facebook. I think, that, I think that would be the uh, the DMs on Instagram would probably be the most direct way. Oh yeah, the most direct yeah. I check way. that the most. Yeah. But um, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Yeah. And uh, in the end, I just want to say. Keep Keep thinking. thinking.